this is Jess Witty, and today I'm going to be sharing my stamped overlay card with you. I love these stamped overlays. I, I started making them because I love getting them at the scrapbook store, but they usually run uh, between two and three dollars a piece. So I just started making my own with paper tray inks, clear cardstock, and some permanent inks. Usually the stays on inks. So that's what I'll be doing today. I'm going to start off by taking my clear cardstock panel that's going to be my actual card base as well um, and I just need to go ahead and score it and the clear cardstock is really thick and it doesn't score in quite the same way as regular cardstock does so I go over it a good two or three times with pretty firm pressure to get a little line in that um, clear cardstock. It doesn't quite fold the same but um, it'll definitely show you where to fold it at and once you burnish it down, it is really tight. Um, it'll let you slip a card inside um, and will pretty much hold it in there really well. So next we're going to start stamping the overlay and I'll be using Background Basics Houndstooth. You can see that I've lined that stamp up on the block so that the bottom darts of the stamp line up with one of the gridded lines on the block and I also used one of the horizontal lines to line up the right side of the stamp. I just feel like that really helps when I'm stamping down on these um, clear cardstock sheets. You kind of want to get it right the first time so I just think it helps to line it up neatly. I'm using stays on um, opaque in cotton white. It's a very sticky ink so um, I tend to clean it up a little bit after I've stamped it down onto my image. And it's a permanent ink, so you want to be careful with it. I'm going ahead and lining up my overlay on my Scorpow mat, and I'm using those lines, the gridded lines on the block, to match up with the grid on the Scorpow mat. That'll just help me make sure I'm getting everything stamped nice and neat and straight the first time. So I stamp it down and then that ink is so sticky that you can just flip the clear cardstock over and it'll stick right to the image and I just rub the back of it to make sure that I've really got that image um, solidly stamped and then you kind of peel the clear cardstock off of it and it leaves a really good impression. I love this ink even if it's a little temperamental. And that little extra mark that I got there on my score mat. If you just go ahead and wipe it up right away, it's not a problem. If you leave it for another minute or two, you can always use a little Mr. Clean Magic Eraser and it'll take it right off. My score mat has seen lots of ink and <laughs> still looks pretty clean. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp the second time. I just need to go ahead and flip my block over to make sure I have it um, stamped in the right direction. Go ahead and ink it up again. Now this ink, I also have to re-ink the pad every time that I use it. It actually came in a package with the ink pad and a re-inker. And it suggests that you re-ink it every time. It's, it's definitely something that I have to do. But I have had that ink pad and the re-inker for quite a while. Probably a year or two. And it's still going strong. It's probably getting now to the end of the re-inker. Um, but I've used it pretty often, so I'd say it's definitely worth it. The white is, of course, very versatile. All right, so there's the overlay. I'm going to move on to doing the little card on the inside. This is the Simply Chartreuse pattern paper in stripe. And I just did a little panel of it onto a craft card base. This card base is actually... Um, a little shorter than the acrylic overlay. I wanted to do it that way so that you can still see part of the clear overlay hanging off the end of the card. I just think it's clear so you should really try and make your card in a way that um, maximizes that impact. So if you make the card a little bit shorter then you get to see the pattern through the overlay but you also get to leave part of the overlay hanging off and I just think it looks cool that way. I like the effect of the clear so 
I got a little extra ink there on the overlay and I just wanted to show you that this is just a damp paper towel and with just rubbing on it pretty firmly it'll come right off. Um, it is a temperamental ink but it's also a little bit forgiving. You can kind of clean it off for a few minutes. If I left it there um, any longer I, I probably wouldn't have been so lucky but I would say if you just keep your eye on it you'll be okay. And I'm going ahead and adding a little bit of adhesive to the very end of this card front because I'm going to be adding a ribbon later um, right over that edge of where the um, little card ends. It's going to work out just fine for me to add a little bit of adhesive. You'll, you'll never see it because it'll be covered by the ribbon. All right, I'm going to go ahead and add my sentiments. I'm going to be using two sentiments. They're from Strawberry Patch and Strawberry Patch Sentiments. And I'm going to be stamping the first one in Berry Sorbet ink. It's that little word, sweet. And I went ahead and stamped this first onto the linen vellum. It's a little bit bigger, so I feel like it needs to be centered first. And then I can add the little front end of the sentiment and know um, how I should line that up. So I'm going to go ahead and use the second part of the sentiment with dark chocolate ink and I have both of my little sentiments on those gridded blocks I just really can hardly not use the blocks anymore that aren't gridded I rely on those little lines so much with my score map just helps me get everything nice and neat so be careful after you've stamped on that vellum because it does take an extra minute or two to dry so you want to just either lay that aside or be very careful when you're going ahead and adding the adhesive. Alright, so I went ahead and added the ribbon bow to my card. If you've ever tried to tie a ribbon on a video, then <laughs> you'll realize that it can sometimes take a little while. <laughs> if you think it's hard to tie a ribbon by yourself, then you should try doing it with the video. It'll be twice as hard. So I went ahead and added a little bit of adhesive under that sentiment and just tucked it right in under the ribbon. And I also cut it, the very edge of it, with some little pinking shears. And then the very last bit is to add those buttons with some glue dots. I like to use a variety of colors instead of using the same three colors. I picked three kind of within the same color family, three different shades, just to give it a little variety and visual interest. And there you go. This is our stamped overlay card. I really love the look of those overlays. Sometimes I'll use the overlays with the stamped image on top and sometimes I'll flip them over so that the stamped image is actually on the reverse side. That gives it a little bit of extra depth. And I just love how they turn out. They work really well with bold images and lined images as well. So give it a shot. See if you like it. This is Jess Witty for Paper Tray Ink. Mm -hmm.